Hey folks, George here again. Today, when we talk about philosophy of law, we're going to examine the legal realism uh, position, especially explicated by Jerome Frank and his legal realist uh, theory. What's interesting about these next three discussions, uh, we're going to talk about legal realism, we're going to talk about critical legal studies, and then we're going to talk about uh, Ronald Dworkin's flavor of uh, uh, law as integrity. What's interesting about these three groups, uh, and I think why David Adams really combined these three different uh, legal philosophies together in one section, is because I think their fundamental underlying question that they're going to address is this. How does the law work? How do people use the law? How do lawyers and judges and jurists utilize the law? So how is it applied? Uh, that's quite different from last time when we talked about uh, the discussion between legal positivists and natural law theorists who are really asking a question, what is the relationship between morality and law, right? Um, these series, the legal realists, uh, critical legal studies folks, and law as integrity more address the question of how does the law work and how do people think about the law? Um, yeah, things like that. We're going to start, of course, as I said, with Jerome Frank's legal realism. And here is his uh, fundamental idea. It really starts with this notion, legal realism does, starts with the notion that certainty is limited. We do not have certainty. Now, that uh, se might seem trivial or obvious, uh, to a certain degree, but what Jerome Frank is going to suggest is that's a problem because in the law, people ask for and strive for certainty. Yet, the problem is, of course, that in just about every field of human uh, intellectual enterprise, there is no such thing as certainty, right? So how do we uh, deal with that weird dichotomy that uh, that there is no certainty, yet there is a desire for certainty. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Jerome Frank is going to suggest that we have to accept that there is no certainty in legal issues and legal matters, right? We just can't have certainty. Uh, we shouldn't strive for certainty then. Oof. Well, that's an uh, interesting sort of idea. Let's see how he gets there. What he is going to acknowledge is, by the way, don't you, uh, alongside with this notion of uh, the lack of certainty, uh, Jerome Frank is going to remind us that we are human beings. And the law is put into practice and exercised by human beings. And as human beings, well, we already mentioned, we don't have certainty. What else affects uh, intellectual enterprise of human beings is biases right? We've all got biases. Therefore, acknowledging that one, we lack certainty, and two, we all have biases and we're influenced, uh, and Jerome Frank is going to be extreme here and say, we're influenced in a great, great way by our biases. What does it mean to talk about reasons in law? Well, <laughs> he is going to be rather cynical in a certain way and suggest that we are deluding ourselves when we talk about legal reasoning and the reasons that support legal conclusions, right? Uh, like I said, this sounds rather cynical, um, so let's really explain where the cynicism comes from. What he says is, first, judges, let's say, come to their conclusion first. They see a case before them, and they just arrive at a conclusion, just like we do in normal human uh, everyday life, by the way, too, don't we? And how does that work then when you arrive at the conclusion first? Well, then you work backwards to manufacture the reasoning that leads to some conclusion. So let's just uh, uh, pick one sort of thing. Uh, a judge might watch a case or, and come to a case, and before he decides the case, he actually, well, at deciding the case, he comes to his conclusion first, guilty. 
guilty, according to uh, Jerome Frank, or innocent or not guilty, um, but let's just assume guilty for a quick second. A judge looks at a case and says guilty, and then manufactures the reasons that will support this guilty conclusion and this guilty verdict. These are merely rationalizations for our conclusions. These aren't really reasons, right, or arguments. These are more like, or better understood as rationalizations, according to Jerome Frank. And again, this is all due to the idea that we have this weird conflict, this weird con uh, these two contradictory impulses. Number one, that we don't have certainty. There's no such thing as certainty, yet we want certainty in legal affairs, right? To support this idea, this rather, uh, yeah, cynical idea that conclusions are arrived at first and then rationalized, the conclusions are rationalized and supported backwards, Jerome Frank suggests just look at every other aspect of how human beings work and how human beings think. Any psychologist, so Jerome Frank suggests, any psychologist will tell you that this is how human thinking works. We first arrive at a conclusion and then try to come up with rationalizations or reasons to support our conclusions, right? And why should it shock us that in the law, it happens the exact same way? It shouldn't shock us. So while I'm sitting here saying this is cynical, Jerome Frank might push back a little bit and say, what's cynical about this? We do this everywhere else, don't we? So why don't we just accept this fact of the human condition and thus you utilize this fact of the human condition to say this is going to be also a fact of the legal system and legal workings, how the law works. Now, Jerome Frank says clearly judges always do this, but isn't it more obvious? Well, excuse me, I think, George, I think it's more obvious when we look at lawyers because look how the legal system works uh, in America at least, right? A client hires a lawyer right? A client hires a lawyer. And what does a lawyer do? A lawyer doesn't try to figure out, well, should I support this client or not? Uh, is the client right or not? Rather, what the lawyer does is say, okay, the client is, you know, hiring me to support what the client's interests are. Now, obviously, lawyers work this way. What Jerome Frank is going to say, is it really that much of a stretch to suggest that judges work in the exact same way? Right? So this helps me, or helped me, when we really understand that, hey, all lawyers work to support their clients where they work backwards and they say, I don't, yeah, let's see what the client wants and I'm going to build a case to support my client. Well, it shouldn't be too much of a stretch to suggest that judges and everybody else thinks that way too. What it, this has certain entailments for how we understand the law then. Jerome Frank is going to say that really when we understand the law then, what we shouldn't be doing is analyzing reasons. Rather, we should make, be analyzing judges' decisions, right? Um, look at the prejudices that some judges might have or the economic interests that some judges might have or political interests that judges might have. When we do study those sorts of things, then we will understand what a judge's decision will probably be, and we'll better understand the judge's position. This is my note, and it's reminding me of history. The first time that I, George, really realized this, or, or had an inkling of how that this was probably the way things worked, was in the 2000 election between George W. Bush and Al Gore. Right Now, it so happens that uh, uh, that election had certain uh, challenges that had to go all the way to the Supreme Court. And how did the Supreme Court decide that case? Well, all the Republican justices of the Supreme Court supported George W. Bush's position, and all the uh, justices who were appointed by Democratic 
uh, presidents supported Al Gore's position. And it, so it, and it went exactly along party lines, exactly along party lines. And because there were more Republican appointed judges on the Supreme Court at that time in 2000, um, of course, George Bush won the case and therefore George Bush won the election. And that, those sorts of uh, ideas and those sorts of thinking, according to uh, Jerome Frank, makes perfect sense. These judges are just waiting and using their own prejudices, their own biases, to make and arrive at their legal judicial conclusions. Now, what is law? Some people will suggest, well, law is what the legislatures and legislators make, right, and decide when they write laws. What Jerome Frank is going to say is, back up. Actually, what law is are decisions made by judges. The law says, for example, given my example, the law was that George W. Bush won the 2000 election. That's the law. Forget what all the laws were written at the time, right? The laws saying that, well, states should determine how their elections are conducted. And by the way, this sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? A little bit more recent. I guess every uh, few years, these sorts of questions reemerge, don't they? But when we go back to 2000, it was the judges who decided what the law really means and what the law really is. And that is Jerome Frank's key uh, insight here. That law works not based on what laws are written down, but rather what judges decide in a case-by-case -case basis. What does that mean then? Those rules that are written down, that's not the law. The rules that we have written down are not the law. Rather, judges' decisions are law. And that's how it really works. The rules that are written down are typically the rationalizations that judges use to arrive at their conclusions. To really support this argument, uh, Jerome Frank gives a sort of a analogy about a physician. And he says, listen, what physician do you want working on you to perform a surgery on you? Do you want a physician who merely follows the rules and says, I must follow these rules when conducting surgery? Or do you want a physician who will look at each surgery and come to their own uh, conclusions about how to make it work? And that's what kind of physician I would want to go to, or at least Jerome Frank would want to go to, right? Is a physician, not a physician who follows abstract rules, but rather a physician who sees a situation before her and says, I will work in this way. And so in the same way Jerome Frank suggests, judges should work. Now, uh, I've been calling this rather cynical, um, after all, doesn't this entail that judges don't have to follow the rules, the written down laws, at all? Well, I don't think Jerome Frank will acknowledge that and, and acquiesce to that notion. Rather, what do judges do? They do have to use the proper kind of reasoning to support their conclusions. And what is these proper kinds of rationalizations? What are these proper kinds of reasons? Well, they are supported by this group of rules or written down laws that uh, legislatures have written. And in that way, it's not 100% where judges do anything that they want. Of course, you can't do anything that they want. They do have to uh, utilize the rules and they have to finagle, so to speak, the rules and reasoning, the rules of reasoning that they're allowed to work with. Otherwise, uh, they would just lose their jobs, right? Um, so we can't do that. And in the same way that uh, the analogy works with a physician, a physician won't just start cutting wherever he wants. He does follow certain rules and says, wait a second, if I want to perform surgery on the heart, I've got to start cutting up here, not down on my leg, for example, or, well, maybe they do cut in the leg sometimes, don't they? Uh, that shows you what I know about uh, surgery or medical physicians. In any case, you do have to follow some sort of rules because that rationalization just can't come out of nowhere, so to speak, 
you don't see many uh, judges nowadays uh, arguing based on uh, the Bible, let's say. They do have to appeal to these sets of rules, not just any rules that they want from anywhere, right? So it's not a completely divorced, let's say, from the rules that are going, but the rules provide the rationalizations for the conclusions that judges probably have already arrived at by their uh, biases and other sorts of uh, previous knowledge and things like that and previous beliefs. So yeah, it's the, the, the relationship between rules and rationalizations, rules and reasonings, isn't completely divorced, but let's acknowledge the reality here that they come to their conclusions first and then use these rules pick and choose which rules best fit this sort of conclusion and best work under this uh, system. That seems like a radically different way than I'm accustomed to thinking, that I was raised to think about how laws work, right? And that's why uh, 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 Jerome Frank is calling his legal philosophy uh, legal realism. This is how it really works after all oof like i said might be a little bit shocking for some of us to uh consider this but when we sit down and consider certain things isn't that how the laws really work hmm. makes me think of different cases now and how different judges have decided cases in the way that they uniquely decide. There's a lot of room for thinking on that, huh? See you next time. Bye-bye.